Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about or weather systems across the North Atlantic as well as the Eastern Pacific. So we have Hurricane Rick, which is making its way into Mexico. It has made landfall this morning. And then over in the Atlantic, we have this disturbance as well as of the potential for us to have future development. So we have two models hinting at development potentially by the end of this month going into the early part of the new month and so before i go into details all right so let us start off with the eastern pacific so here we have the five day graphical tropical weather outlook and we see that we really just have rick uh there are no other disturbances over in the epac and the canadian satellite imagery of the hurricane here we have it we have it being a very compact system and it is bringing all of those dangerous conditions that very heavy rainfall these strong winds that storm surge all of those conditions are affecting portions of mexico right now so let's go on to the cone forecast and so we see here that Ray currently has sustained winds of around 105 miles per hour, but there is a likelihood that it has slightly weakened uh, because, of course, it has made landfall. And as of right now, we do have a hurricane warning that is in place as well as a tropical storm warning. So we have a hurricane warning that is in effect for Tecpan de Galeana to Punta San Telmo and a tropical storm warning that is in effect for east of Tecpan de Galeana to Acapulco and for west of Punta San Telmo to Manzanillo. So those areas are likely experiencing those dangerous conditions that I mentioned earlier. But the areas that are going to be feeling the worst of the storm are those that are under the hurricane warning. So guys, I hope that if you're there, things are not so bad. I hope everyone is in a safe location at this time. And so the hurricane is creeping to the north slowly at 8 miles per hour. But fortunately, it is expected to dissipate by tomorrow. Because of course, it's going to be moving inland away from all the fuel that has enabled it to intensify into a hurricane. So without the warm ocean waters, then we're eventually going to have the system dissipating. But the story is not over there. Uh, the remnants of the cyclone could bring increased moisture to other portions of western Mexico, resulting in some increased rainfall, potentially flash flooding as well. So please be mindful of that guys and so now let's go ahead and hop over into the atlantic so we haven't seen a disturbance in quite some time that has really had a good chance to develop but here we have one and october has been relatively quiet we've not had a single storm develop in the month of october but could that happen during the latter part of the month meaning probably by later this week so there is a potential so let's look at this disturbance as you're seeing on the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, this disturbance is given a 40% chance to potentially develop. So this is actually going to come, this disturbance is going to come from Northeastern that is expected to bring some dangerous conditions to portions of the Northeastern U.S. and the Mid-Atlantic states. So by late today going into tomorrow, that low pressure area is expected to accelerate off the coast of the U.S. And that is where we are going to have our disturbance being marked because there is no X. Usually we see the x to show the location of our disturbances but we are not seeing it now and that is the reason so we don't have that low pressure area developing as yet but it is likely to do so uh definitely by tomorrow and so the chances at a medium 40 percent so as the system is going to be making its way out into the atlantic there is a chance that it will acquire some subtropical or uh, tropical characteristics and probably become a cyclone so we really have to watch this but the good news is that it's accelerated away from land and not going to be a threat during the next couple of days and so now let's go ahead and take a look at conditions and then we're going to be taking a look at what over models the gfs and the icon are showing for the rest of this month and for the early part of next month so let's go ahead and take a look at the ocean temperature map so we see that sea surface temperatures are very warm at this time in the caribbean and for portions of the gulf of mexico but off the gulf coast states uh, we're definitely seeing a cool down right where you see that green that indicates that the ocean Ocean temperatures or the sea surface temperatures are cooler same story off the southeastern coast of the u.s so these are the areas where you would see rapid intensification happening during the peak of the hurricane season which was back in september especially off the coast of 
Louisiana right there where we had hurricanes like either rapidly intensifying. So we're having a cool down in those areas now as this hurricane season is coming to a close. And over in the eastern Pacific, over the left portion of your screen, uh, we can see here that all the coast of Mexico is very warm. So those warm ocean waters definitely helped Rick to intensify. And so now let's go ahead and look at the wind shear. So we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear. We have the green that means favorable shear, the yellow that means neutral, and the red that means unfavorable. So things have been quite hostile across most of the Atlantic Basin where we would usually have development but parts of the South Caribbean are now experiencing favorable shear so if we had any disturbances in that region there would be somewhat of a chance for them to develop but we don't have any as of right now. In terms of the dry air now, the Saharan dust, we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is. So we have the light yellow that indicate that it is not a lot of dust, but the dark orange going to that red shade indicates that we have very dense amounts of dust. So we have that, uh, that plume of dust across the main development region accelerating westward. We have quite a bit affecting portions of the Lesser Antilles. So even if we look at satellites, we would notice that there isn't much going on in terms of shower activity in portions of the Eastern Caribbean and that is due to the dry air because it prevents moisture and moisture is something that developing thunderstorms need so without it there is going to be limited rainfall and that's exactly the case for the Eastern Caribbean as of right now. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what our GFS and ICON models are predicting. So this is a map showing the isobars which are lines of equal pressure. So when you see them which are the black lines being very closely packed uh, in a circular manner and the pressure is below 1013 millibars that indicates low pressure system that could potentially be a tropical cyclone so that is what we're looking for here so this is the GFS model and this is by Monday the 8th of November and so taking a look at the Caribbean we're seeing that we have increased moisture in the vicinity of the South Caribbean and portions of the Northwestern Caribbean so let's head further out and as we head to Tuesday the 9th we're seeing that that moisture is being lifted up to the north and is in the vicinity of the Bahamas. So that could potentially be a developing cyclone by the 10th. GFS is showing a low pressure area just off the coast of southeastern Florida. So guys, this is not guaranteed to happen, but tropical cyclones typically take on that track when it is the month of November. So October, November is when we see systems mainly coming from the South Caribbean and making their way up to the north. And so let's go on and see what the ICOM model is expecting. So this is by by the end of this week, Saturday on the 30th, and ICON is showing a 1006 millibar low pressure system developing off the coast of Africa. So Usually at this time of the hurricane season, as I said, we have storms typically developed from the South Caribbean. But once conditions are just right out in the main development region, once we don't have a lot of that Saharan dust or unfavorable wind shear being in the region, then it is likely or there is a chance that we could have some development taking place. So we'll definitely have to wait and see what's going to be the eventual outcome as we're going to be heading into the rest of this hurricane season. And so guys, that is it for this updated video on the tropics. And so if you found it to be quite informative, please have a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or as a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weatherwise